Welcome to Into the Shoujoverse, a podcast that is all things shoujo. I'm going to start by introducing our members. I'll go first. I am Azayaka. I'll just go by Aza here. I'm a medical technician and a cosplayer, Azayaka Cosplay, on Instagram and Facebook. My hobbies are anxiety and student loan debt, but we are here to talk about shoujo. Bees. Um, all right, I am 10,000 Bees, or you can just call me Bees. Right now, I'm a student getting my second degree in medical laboratory science. My first degree was in microbiology. Uh, my hobbies include gaming and Dungeons and Dragons, which is uh, probably the nerdiest hobby someone can have, but you know, it's what I need to get through the studying. <laughs> Hello, I'm Miso. I'm currently a university student, student majoring in health science, and my hobbies are crying and sleeping, sometimes crying about shoujo, sometimes crying about school. Wah, wah. I felt that. Yeah. A lot of times, the same time, yep. Me too. Hey everyone, um, my name is Nikki. Uh, I am applying for a master's program right now, so hopefully I'll be starting that soon. Um, I'm really excited to start this podcast with everyone here, and some of my hobbies are K-pop, so I'm a huge K-pop fan. If anyone's ever into K-pop, you can always talk to me. I will talk for hours about K-pop, and just kind of music in general. Pre-COVID, I was really into going to concerts and everything, so yeah, catch me at a music festival. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> That's pretty good. I lived in Korea, so I mean, I should be able to. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, I guess it's my turn then. My name is Shoujo Addict, and you can call me Shochan for short. I'm super excited to be here and talk about these shoujo manga series with some really cool people here. I'm also a university student, but studying computer science, and I also enjoy, in my free time, ugly sobbing over emotional K-dramas and being in an unrequited love with many 2D men. Relatable. Yeah, very relatable. We debated about Shochan's name for, like, more than anything else we've ever debated about. Just what to call her. We're all shoujo addicts here. <laughs> oh, that's so true. <laughs> so you guys better be happy. Well, my name is Samosa. I am a university student in my last semester. I'm studying cell and molecular biology. It's not a fun major. If you're thinking of doing this major, I would highly recommend not doing it. Do another major. <laughs> that exists. God. <laughs> Get out of this major. Same with CS. Oh my god. If you do bad in this major, there's no way out. You can't do anything with this major. <laughs> um, but... Or you discourage people. Um, but it's, I mean, it's a fun major. Other than that. <laughs> um, I have lived in Korea for 10 years and right now I'm back in the States. And fun fact about me is that I have a spinal fracture and it's a lot of pain, but a lot of fun too, because people get like very quiet when you say, oh, you have a spinal fracture, what? <laughs> you have a spinal fracture, what? Yeah. <laughs> Does it hurt? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay i get to sit around and it's not the worst i'm not paralyzed so it's a pro that's good yeah that's good news <laughs> on that very positive note let's talk about shoujo what is shoujo why are we here what are we talking about i'm talking about shoujo please don't get into existential stuff <laughs> <laughs> What is the meaning of life? Why are we here? Tell us. Yeah. <laughs> I was just about to. So basically, I feel like each of us can give our own renditions on the rundown of shoujo. But shoujo literally translated means young girl. And here we are talking about manga that's specifically marketed towards young girls. And is focused on drama, emotion, and usually idealized romance. And... You know, there are specific tiles I'm sure that many of you may know already from even watching it here, wherever you are. Sailor Moon, for example, Fruits Basket has been a really recent popular one, or on High School Host Club. Those are examples of that. Yes, we're talking about a manga aimed at a demographic that literally fits none of us. So. <laughs> I mean, we're young not if you want to be young. Uh, we're young. I still young. refer yeah. to myself as a girl. I think so. so I'm not a woman, I'm a girl. <laughs> I mean, yeah. the definition's kind of blurred, because, like, I feel like a lot of things just get published as shoujo, but they aren't necessarily, like, fits in with the other shoujo series. 
Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, or Horimiya. <laughs> oh my god. Oh yeah, Horimiya's not a shoujo. <laughs> I'm, Technically yeah. shounen. Akatsuki uh, no Yona is a really- it's a shoujo and it's- it's really good. <laughs> I wouldn't- Yeah, it's like an epic. I wouldn't say it's like for young girls, yeah. since it just covers like a lot of like, mature topics. It's too- it's agreed. too political for young yeah, girls, for sure. I think. Yeah, agreed. Definitely agree. I think There's I... also, um, all those shoujos that are a little, um, kind of 18 plus material going on in it. <laughs> mm, yeah. And they're they're still categorized under shoujo. Yeah, I so. think it has to do with uh, the magazine it's published in is technically how it gets yeah. uh, labeled. There's actually a spin-off of Attack on Titan that got serialized in a shoujo magazine. And so oh. I think I was looking at like a list of rankings for shoujo and Attack on Titan, yeah, Attack on Titan was on there, and everyone's like, why is this here? And they're like, well, it got, technically, it got serialized in a shoujo magazine, so that's why it's here, and I was like, well, uh, yeah. (laughs) Officially shoujo wants to get serialized in one. That one where they're high school students? Right? Sorry. Right? Say that again? Attack on Titan, there was like a spinoff where they're high school students, right? Um, I'm not sure what it was. I just kind of saw it briefly. I so. didn't even realize they went oh, to okay. school. I there was like a chibi version. <laughs> I don't think they. I don't think they do. I know there was like a chibi version that they animated. I didn't know it was a manga form as well. But maybe we gotta look into that because Attack on Titan Shoujo sounds like the <laughs> next mm. thing. The next reading. <laughs> <laughs> so at a future point, we're definitely going to get into more of the history of shoujo, some classic series, um, but. Briefly, you know, we've gone over what it is, and we've named a few of the most popular current series. Um, but yeah, at a later time, we'll definitely jump more into the history of it and delve in on the origins and then the different subgenres like Mahou Shoujo and etc. Um, but let's let's talk about what got us into shoujo. Um, little personal stories here. Ooh. I'm going to start with mine. Um, for me, it all started with Sailor Moon, Pokemon, and My oh. Neighbor Totoro, which was like my favorite movie ever. And I think I watched it like every day and had the all of the lines memorized. Oh, wow. Uh, but I, <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I've never gone to Studio Ghibli. Like that. That's insane. Did you memorize the Japanese lines <laughs> or the English ones? Oh, I was just watching the dub. I At that time, I had no concept of Japan. Like, I didn't know that this I was know, anime. Right? But when I was 10, I have a diary entry from when I was 10 years old that (laughs) says, I finally found out the art style I love is called anime. Like, it's super cute and also super, like, watching the birth of a nerd. Um, It's just so funny that I actually wrote that (laughs) at 10 years old. Oh, little us is so cute. cute. Right? (laughs) Um... So between like 10 and 13, you know, I started watching more anime, Kenshin, um, Tenchimuyo, DBZ, etc. All that stuff that was on Cartoon Network, Yu-Gi-Oh, of course. Um, And then at 13, I met some people, like I used to look at the manga in the shelves at Barnes Noble and this ancient place called Borders, which no longer I miss exists. Borders so much. Oh my much. gosh, I remember that. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Oh my god. I have no idea what yeah. that is. So at a recent convention I went to, you know how they do scavenger hunts? Or maybe you don't yeah. know, but they do scavenger hunts, and one of the items on the list was a Borders card. Oh man. It was like, did anyone oh like keep those in their wallet for you know 10 years after the company My mom still under? has hers. <laughs> Right? I'm pretty I sure I still, still had houses. one. Yep. But, um, so, I would look at the manga, but I didn't understand how to read them, and I kind of felt, like, unworthy to touch them. <laughs> you are unworthy. <laughs> That's not so cute. I'm really not sure where that came from. I must be ready. Right? Yeah. So, but, like, 13, 14 years old, I made a friend who had a, show, a manga collection, and my Ooh. first manga was Magic Knight Ray Earth. And then Marmalade Boy, which is like a super classic shoujo. Um, so that was it. my introduction to both manga pretty good. and shoujo. And oh my god, that's when I started drawing my own little shoujos that were super Aww. dramatic. Oh. <laughs> yes. Oh, I want to yeah. feel. Yeah, we all, uh, we were all in that I, phase at one point. Yeah. <laughs> we we talk about yourself. I still have them. 
I made my friends read them too. Oh, no. Like these little, I I really don't think oh they enjoy them. Oh my god! Oh, I actually have something real, kind of similar. Instead of making re- like making people read it, I used to draw like anime bookmarks. Oh, that's so I cute. Sold them to my friends. <gasps> that's I not similar. Them that's so like smart. very I normal. Money. I made money. Yeah, I didn't make An money. entrepreneur. Just... Yeah, I'm pretty sure I just scammed yeah. my friends. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now Wait, I know no, to you look to out for your you art. in the future. You worked so hard to make those. Don't deny your no, hard work. No, right. I, I hope she still exactly. has it. Oh. Um, but yeah, for me back like back as a as a teen, it was just about the dokies. It was about yeah. my ideal romance and stuff that like I couldn't even begin to ponder in reality. Um, but as I got older and I actually did start to experience love. I started to pay more attention to the friendships in shoujo. Um, so I'm still in for the dokies right now, but I, I pay more attention to the bonds that characters form um, through oh, hardship. So sweet. Yeah, and the way that they make effort to understand each other and like restore their relationships when they're broken because friendship just means a lot to me. And I've had a lot of friendships that didn't go so well. So shoujo is like my beacon of hope. Like you can have a good and healthy friendship. But also, here's some dokies and smut. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, Just a cherry on top. Zero to hundred. Zero to hundred. So, oh, God. that is my story. I can't wait to delve into all the shoujo has to offer. Let's hear about some other people's stories. Do do do. Thank you for that musical interlude. <laughs> it's called my mouth. Who wants to go next? Well, if we're going in alphabetical order, I guess I'm next. Oh, great. I'm so right. excited for this. You've really hyped this mm-hmm. up. Yeah, oh, I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited. Go. Uh, mm-hmm. Deliver all the way. Comparatively, my story is not nearly as exciting. Um, I do remember when I was little, I was really into Pokemon. Like I said, I like playing games, oh. and I've liked this since I was really little. Um, so I watched Pokemon, and probably just any anime that was on Cartoon Network. I think I watched a couple episodes of Naruto, but I never knew what was going on. Um, Mm -hmm. I didn't get into... I didn't have, like, anyone introduce me to anime or manga until my high school boyfriend. (laughs) Real romantic. Oh, Oh, the shoujo story. Oh, man. That's funny. Oh, my gosh. Shoujo backstory. Oh, man. Let's get it. Um... And it was first anime, God, I, I hate to admit this, but my I think my first anime might have been Sword Art Online. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyways, I didn't get into... I was trying really hard to think about um, what actually got me into reading shoujo manga, because no one introduced it to me. I found... I think pretty sure I found it from following aesthetic... Uh, Aesthetic anime blogs on Tumblr. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I saw some the panels Tumblr and blogs. I was like, this looks what cool. What a generation. Oh, and you're then... from the online generation. I used to go to Borders every Saturday and read manga. Oh, what the is shelves, Borders? Like Borders is like, it's Borders like Barnes is like and Noble. Borders was the competitor of Barnes and Noble, but they died because no Now Amazon is going to take over everything. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <sighs> Back in the days when they didn't shrink wrap the books, I have a theory that I am the, I personally am the cause of bookstores shrink wrapping manga because I used to sit there for like all day, seven to eight hours and just read manga off of the shelves, like sit on the floor in front of the bookshelf. They would always be like, don't you want to go to the cafe? There's chairs there. I'm like, no, I need to be near the manga (laughs) so I can grab the next one with utmost speed. If you're like grinding, oh, I, I, I did that. So yeah, I'm pretty sure it's me personally who's responsible for them then shrink wrapping all the manga, so you can't just sit there and read them in the store. Oh, thank thank you for that. I didn't know they were actually in Barnes and Nobles. They aren't because I read like this was more recently. I think like a few years ago, I used to go every Friday to Barnes and Nobles and like in the evening spend a few hours just grabbing sh- manga from like the shelves and I would read them. I, would, I was like you, Aza, in that. Like, I didn't even know you were allowed yeah. to do that. I thought you had to go, like, you had to buy something at Barnes and Nobles if you wanted to right. read it. Nope. Nice. They would put little signs around that said like, you cannot sit in the aisle. Oh, like, I'm pretty sure that. it was oh, my really? fault. Yeah, but I think that they also like, 
when I stopped doing that is when that stuff started clearing up. Kind of suspicious. Um, anyway, so back to you, bees. <laughs> uh, bees. Yeah. Um, so yeah, my story isn't nearly as exciting, and it's kind of embarrassing. Um, don't worry, my tastes have evolved much more past Sword Art Online. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um. But yeah, like I just had to. I just stumbled into shoujo by myself, and uh, I'm. Uh, I can't really tell you why I like it. It just, you know, it makes me happy. That's all. That's uh, all I can ask for, really, in I these hard times. It's an escape. One hundred percent happy. That's valid. Totally valid. Wait, what was embarrassing about that? That was pretty wholesome. Mm-hmm. <laughs> My yeah, high school boyfriend introducing me to anime. It's kind of cute. <laughs> That's not yeah. embarrassing. Yeah. The only, only shocking factor is like sort of online. The shocking yeah. factor <laughs> is that you had a boyfriend in high school. God. Just, just imagine a boyfriend that's like, hey, you want to come to my house and watch an anime? <laughs> you want a manga and chill? Oh no. <laughs> like, kind of cute and nerdy. <laughs> crunchy roll and chill. Bleh. Oh my god. Hatsune Miku and chill. <laughs> <laughs> he actually had a Hatsune Miku wall scroll on his wall. Oh no. Oh my god. Okay, wait a wait, second. Have you I feel seen like him recently? Weird. Like, do you know what he's like now? No, I don't. Oh my god. I think you should look him up. I feel like this would be just hilarious to see what he's like now. Oh my god. Um, I, I still follow him on all the social medias, but he never posts anything, so. Oh. Actually, it's really funny because he moved from where I grew up. And then I moved to go to school, and I moved again to go to a different school, and now I work in the same city that he lives in. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Ooh. Fate. Fate. Sounds like the shoujo manga manga plotline. Shoujo manga. (laughs) Let's go. I'm not sure about that one. (laughs) (laughs) There's a reason why people break up, right? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. I say this as if I've ever been in a relationship. Still, though, that's cute. That's wholesome. There's nothing embarrassing there. Yeah. All right, Miso, lay it on us. Well, I don't actually recall, like, really knowing when I got into shoujo specifically. Like, I think Azayan, like, mentioned, like, a Ghibli film. Uh, I guess that would be, like, my first intro into, like, anime would be Ghibli film. Yeah. You can start with anime. Yeah. Well, like, my problem with, like, Ghibli films was that, like, my mom had, like, Am I allowed to say this? Pirated a DVD version. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, You're not responsible for your mom's actions, nope. me. So it's okay. Yeah, exactly. It's okay. Um, they were all dubbed in like Chinese. So like for the longest time, I thought they were just Chinese like shows. Oh so, like, no. <laughs> so um, that's that. Mm-hmm. And um, I bet the Chinese dub must have been really good either way, since Ghibli does a really good job. Yeah, the Cantonese dubs are pretty good. But like at least like, what I watched. And then, like, my sister was always, like, a fan of anime, so I guess, like, I got introduced to anime from there. I just recall, like, my first manga that I've ever read was actually, like, Detective Conan. I think it's called Case Closed now. And I was, like, yeah. eight at that time, so, uh, kind of traumatic. <laughs> kind of bloody. Wait, have you read all of it? Um, no, I have not. There's, like, a thousand chapters or something, right? It's there still are. not completed, It's the longest right? manga in history. No, somehow he is still a child. <laughs> no, I think it ended. I think it did end. What the heck? I don't think it ended. Wait a minute. I'll Google We're gonna it. We're going to Google here now. Who's Googling? <laughs> so I don't want to silence. <laughs> Me. Okay, solid. I'm Googling it. <laughs> okay, well, that was like one of my first mangoes. And I also had like a lot of secondhand mangoes from like, I don't know if you guys have Value Villages in the States or not. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. okay you find all the. Wait, what's a Value Village? It's like a secondhand shop. Oh, okay. I have like. It was like 99 cent mangas, so like I still have That's a lot crazy. of them. Like I had like Full Metal Alchemist, I think. Oh wow! Bleach. Oh, I should have gone to Value Village for that. I didn't know that. Well, it depends on your community. I guess my community had a lot of mangas. <laughs> nice. Wait, is Value Village like a West Coast thing? Since I've never seen that before. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't even know. <laughs> I think I've seen it in Seattle, so maybe it is a West Coast thing. <laughs> yeah. I think Detective Conan is still ongoing. Damn! It started in 94. Oh my god. I knew it. That's insane. Did he, like, graduate high school yet? Or, like, or did she graduate high school yet? 
Somebody should just calculate, like, how many days have passed in the story. You know, I think I have seen someone do that online. What? And it's not that many. The timeline. Because if it's, like, 1,000 epi- chapters, right? So, one like, an episode a day. So, that's, like, what? Oh four years? Three to four years? Well, I mean, it, it kind of makes sense, considering, like, how long episodes yeah. can be. And, you know, anime oh, yeah. editing. Yeah. Does he ever, like, become an adult? Like, ever? Like, even for, like, a short amount of time? Oh, yeah, doesn't he? There's, a, there's like, at least some point where he's an adult. That's so like sad. temporarily. I don't know. I feel like it's so sad. He's just stuck. He can't do anything about it. I mean, isn't that, like, Ash Ketchum? See, he doesn't yeah. realize it. <laughs> he has Ash Ketchum syndrome. I think he's a little different. Wait, didn't Digimon have them turn into adults in, like, the later thingy? Um, yeah, they actually released a couple years ago Digimon Adventure Try, where they're, I think, in yeah. high school or maybe college or something like that. Since I remember, like, seeing, a, like, a still of it, and they, they were smoking and drinking <laughs> alcohol, and I was like, oh, okay. I don't know if that's <laughs> true, but yes, they did or do Digimon like, Try, yeah. which was poop. Oh, mm. that's sad. At it least you were sad. able to drink alcohol, and, like, Detective Conan, he'll never drink alcohol, because he's a minor. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see him do it, though. I want to see him try. As a minor? Yes. Wait. And drink alcohol. <laughs> I think it would be wild. hilarious. I thought he was actually like an adult or something. He but is it's just his yeah. body. Yeah. Okay. He yeah. got transformed into a child. I don't know. Wait, that how much old about is he? It, like, but... what's his mental age? Seventeen or eighteen? He's a high school oh, student. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, this is not the Detective Conan podcast. It's a shoujo podcast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was like, I don't even know Detective Conan. Wait, you don't? Yeah, I haven't. Okay, I know I've heard about it, but I haven't watched it. It's like one of those where I'm like, oh, I've, I know it's a thing out there. Kind of like, okay, it sounds bad, but I haven't watched Sailor Moon. I know. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm like the just... same way. I haven't wow, seen it either. Wow, disqualified to be on the <laughs> podcast. I know. Goodbye. I know. I know. Like, oh, it's a shoujo, and I'm like, yeah, you're right, but I actually haven't seen that one. To be fair, Sailor Moon wasn't really airing when I was like born, so. I didn't yeah, really watch it either. It was like the early, early 2000s, like late 90s. Yeah, yeah that's true. That's yeah. true. It I... was actually the early 90s. Only magical girl anime I remember watching as a kid would be like, Pretty Cure. Magical Doremi. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Magical Doremi. And also uh, Tokyo Mew Mew. <laughs> Tokyo <laughs> Mew Mew. Yeah, Tokyo Mew Mew, I remember that. Uh, Tokyo Mew Mew is a, is a poor imposter of Sailor Moon. I'm sorry. Oh, oh that's a hot take. I mean, all the magical girl ones aren't the same as yeah. Sailor Moon's. Okay, but, like, Wedding Peach is, like, a good knockoff of Sailor Moon, whereas, like, Tokyo Moon... Hey, they, they, they raised awareness about endangered species, okay? That... <laughs> I don't even remember the series that well to say that. <laughs> okay, fair enough. But if you read the manga, it is incredibly weird how, like, a child is kind of sexualized. She's you know, 12. Yeah. She's yeah. 12, and she has way bigger boobs than I do. There's a reason why I don't look back on that. I mean, Sailor Moon is the same way, too. Like, those skirts. Oh, yeah. No, Sailor Moon's <laughs> not okay with its 14-year-old protagonist and 19-year-old romantic interest. Didn't, didn't they age up, like, the guy from Sailor Moon to, like, a university Did they student? Really? I think he was older. No, they, they actually, I think in the English dub, they made him younger, but he is a university student, and she's in middle school. Middle school? Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. that's a little bit weird. Oh, no. Yeah, that's gross. Like 14. <laughs> that's kind of yikes. Uh. It's very yikes. What do you call 119. Okay, but that's going to be an episode. Age gaps. Age gaps are going to be an episode in the future. So stay tuned for more age gap stuff. You got age a lot of gap roast, you mean? Yep. Where we tear it apart, but also talk about how we still read it anyway. Yeah, basically. Sometimes yeah. you gotta read things that are like, yikes. Yeah, to appreciate yep. the good. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, as long as you're aware that it's like a yikes, I think that's good enough, right? Yep. Yeah. Well, I started off with Sailor Moon. Ooh. I was really young when I watched it, actually. Um, but that was like my earliest memory of shoujo and everything um but yeah i remember when i was like four or five years old my parents would take me to the 
video rental store across the street when oh. those were still a thing. Is that like Blockbuster? Um, Blockbuster? <laughs> it wasn't Blockbuster, oh, okay. no. It was actually like a small, like, family run type oh, cool. business. Yeah, it was really cute. I was really disappointed and devastated when, you know, it closed down because of Redbox and, like, Netflix and everything. Mm. Um, but I used to go there all the time. It was, like, a dollar, dollar fifty to rent something. And there was, like, a whole section of all the Sailor Moon VHSs. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, VHS? And... VHS? Yeah, VHSs. The good old and days. Then... Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was, I was, like, four or five, and I would always rent those out. Um... Because I, I think I didn't start school yet, so that was, like, my earliest memory. Um, my older sister is 11 years older than me. So when I was, like, five or six, she was, like, 17 or 18. You know, prime age for a lot of anime watchers. Yeah. And I think um, eventually my first exposure to anime, um, like, subbed anime. Like, I think when I, when I watched Sailor Moon, it was dubbed. But my first exposure to subbed anime was when she would watch um, Naruto. Oh. And I was kind of like, oh, this is kind of interesting. What are you watching? And then that was like my exposure to um, subbed anime. And I think I I was pretty open-minded even for a kid. I don't think I ever was like deterred by the language barrier. And... Mm. um. So it was kind of something where I didn't really think twice about when I saw stuff and it was in Japanese. And I was like, I'll just watch it. And I spent a lot of time on the internet. I was someone who was on the computer yeah, all the time. Same. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and I think when I was, when I was like maybe eight years old, I went to Vietnam to visit family. And in a hotel room in Vietnam, Gaku and Alice was playing. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> yeah, and I was like really into it, and I remember looking it up and watching it. That was like well, probably one of um, the first subbed animes I watched, and I just fell in love with it. And it's still to this day one of my favorite shoujo mangas, or even just mangas in general. It's really good. Yeah, I Have agree. It yeah, it's pretty good. It. I'm on that journey and right that's now. That's how I got into. Yeah, and that's how I got into reading it because, you know, I was so in love with the anime. I had to, like, get more. I found out it was, you know, adapted from a manga. So I was like, I am reading this. And, yeah, and so, yeah, that's kind of the story of how I got into it. Um, I'm also from a very predominantly, like, Asian area. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, and so it was, like, not really that far out there like everyone was kind of watching anime or like reading manga um because it was such like there's so much asian culture around the area and yeah and so now um looking at my manga updates lists i am at like 250 completed mangas or something like that a majority of them a majority of them shoujo mangas i also have a tendency to um, not finish mangas really well yep. so I have like another hundred that are like on my reading or unfinished list <laughs> um, yeah and these days I've been really into webtoons and like those Korean yeah. manhwas oh yeah me too They're, something about them is just very nice and different yeah. from yeah. like yeah. the Japanese shoujo I think webtoons are a lot easier to read too compared to like manga Right, so you, so you could just scroll. Any versus like manga, you have to like tap. <laughs> yeah, and there's color. Sure. <laughs> yeah, color. So much pretty colors. It. Yeah, color is a game changer sometimes. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, webtoons are really interesting because they're a little bit like, I mean, at least in America, if you read the through the webtoons app, it's really cool to see like so many different things related to the romance genre. Maybe like, and it's all written by people like across the country. I feel. like not even sorry like across the world which is really cool to see it's more diverse but i feel like with the webtoons app now like the english one there's a lot of like english like by american not americans but like english speaking people who like wrote their own and it got like caught on there's like so i still feel like they Mm -hmm. they use the challenge series more than like actually bother translating yeah Mm -hmm. i mean i've been seeing like a lot of korean like webtoons being translated on the webtoon app recently there's a lot of those too and then like yeah, getting their names most changed. of them are korean 
it's really nice how accessible it is for creators to be able to put up a webtoon where as opposed to like in the older days 10 years not even that long ago i'd say like five years ago even um you had to go through a publisher and it was so like they didn't publish english manga like i mean they didn't publish manga by non japanese people like they just yeah. translated yeah. Anime so true. manga and, you know there was a couple korean ones out there like i think fairy's landing was one of the rare korean manhwa that made it over but like i have a, actually I have a story about that when i was 14 or so my dream was to become a mangaka a manga artist oh, <laughs> classic oh, yo, I get <laughs> like, that. yeah like every other nerd out there yeah. um so my dad was like taking it really seriously he was like okay well how are you gonna do this like wow i'm gonna be with if you want to be serious about it then i'm gonna help you but like you need oh, to have a plan my because... parents would push me aside <laughs> so what my dad did he called tokyo pop and apparently they're like a super tiny company because he just talked to the editor at tokyo pop like no phone assistant or or you know administrator Whoa. like he just talked to the editor and they were like okay well this is what you need to do but also like we don't really publish people um mm. <laughs> oh yeah like, we don't really publish americans <laughs> Oof. but um yeah, so that was the story of how my dad talked to the editor at Tokyo Pop, which no longer I mean, exists. That's very wholesome and cute. Yeah, very supportive. That's yeah. a very fun story. That's a very fun story. It's very I know. I okay. think back on that, and I'm like, that happened to me. Okay. <laughs> what a power move from your dad, right there. He was so determined right? to get you published. Yeah. I didn't even ask him mm-hmm. to do that. Like he just did it for me, and comes oh my God. like I come home from school, and he's like, I'm surprised you actually found. Yeah, also that. I know, right? <laughs> Because he back also, then, was he? Did he? Was he into manga? Back then, like, I mean, obviously we had internet back then, but it wasn't. <laughs> there wasn't any manga online. Like, you couldn't read manga online. You couldn't even watch anime online yet. Like, there weren't even sites mm. or like. I don't think YouTube existed yet. It might have been like the very early, early, early stages. But YouTube came around like what? Shh, don't date me. Don't age me. <laughs> <laughs> I was already born, oh, so I, I had I had YouTube. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but anyway, there it just like there wasn't really any reason for Tokyo Pop to try and be hard to find or hard to contact. <laughs> they yeah. probably wanted to be easy to contact at that time, so I think that, and they probably just had so few members because all they really do is just probably hire an outside service to translate, and then they just publish. So they don't really need that many employees, which is probably why it was just like. Hey, yeah, we're a three-employee company. You can talk to the editor. Like, sure, why not? That's insane. <laughs> this is so wow. easy. <laughs> yeah, this yeah. Is, I'm just guessing. Like, I can't say this for sure. I don't want to say anything about Tokyo Pop and be like, this is fact. But I'm just guessing that's how it was based off of that experience I had. Yeah. Your dad basically yellow paged. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, what the heck? He probably did. He literally pulled out, let me talk to your manager on Tokyo <laughs> <Yeah>. Pop. <laughs> Tokyo Pop. <laughs> I feel like pulls up a giant textbook of like yellow page. <laughs> well, my dad um, has done like he's in the movie business, so he's done. Oh, okay. He's like yeah. done publishing. I mean, he's not like a big name or anything. He's got a few good contacts, but um, he kind of knows how. But yeah, he knows like people. he knows how editing and publishing works. He has a pretty good understanding, so I think that's why he was like, I could probably call Tokyo Pop and just talk to like just ask to talk to the editor yeah you could have gotten an internship in tokyo right they used to do those um they used to do those manga contests too and then they would publish the winner like i remember there was one called i think it was called drama con that was a winner of and i think the artist was russian or something i don't know anytime russians are so good at art (laughs) a lot of them i see them so on i just remember looking at any um stuff that was published that was not by a japanese person and i was so snooty i would be like ew this is garbage like this isn't real anime no. oh, oh, I know. I'm, like, I, I'm still like that <laughs> back then i was uh really turned off by manhwas actually because i think the art yeah. style of the manhwas like the older manhwas were like a little funky to me uh i have to agree shout out to Huang miri with her the, the dude like <laughs> The dudes were too bishonen, like they were too pretty. 
you know, and the like the detail they drew on the guy's lips and like no nose. Where is the nose? I know exactly yeah. what you're talking about for the lips. Mm hmm. Even the eyes, they were, too, they were too like, beautiful. And now, now we're all about that, right? But back then I was like, no, they are too pretty. I think they look better if they're colored versus mm. like black and white, the eyes. Honestly, I feel bad because I never got into the mon the Korean manhwas at that early time. Are there any good ones you would recommend? I read a couple. Fairy's Landing. No. <laughs> no, oh, no, CL. CL After Story is really good. Okay. I would recommend that one. It's, a, it's sad, but... I'm all for sad stuff. I'll put it in the yeah, chat later. Yeah, that'd be cool. See, I can't recommend any shoujo ones. So I only gonna... know the BL ones. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's a whole other thing. Oh, oh, we're, we're gonna, gonna have some episodes about that too. Also, is BL considered shoujo? BL. Is it? It's no, no, it's BL. It's, BL. it's shonen it's, it's BL. I think the the target yeah. audience is in the same demographic, so I think there is the same target audience, but. Um, it is its own the genre. The Fujo shoes. I, I yeah, think it's, it's yeah. its own genre. Yeah, it's its own. Dem- it's the same demographic, but I think older, like older female, not as yeah. young as Shoto. Yeah, yeah, definitely. True. Yeah, true. They, see, they they kind of like work you up to be out. They're like, look, here's Shoto. Here's what love <laughs> is, and then they're like, look, here's here's um, BL. This is what it could Every- be. Everybody can love Here each other. Here are all the possibilities in love. So I mean, it's kind of wholesome like, when you put it that way. Yeah, Shoujo I like, is like love one hundred and one. It's like your intro to what love is, and then there's all the other genres when you get older. Like, you could have smut if you want, like Jose, Jose or something. and yeah. seinen. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of good romance seinens. You wouldn't think so, but I like a lot of them. I've read. I haven't read a lot yeah. of seinens. Seinen is a tough genre, I think, to uh, define. They cover a lot of the more mature yeah, it's topics. Yeah, recently getting more popularity, I think. I think it's just also a really broad genre. So, yeah. It's, yeah. like, a lot of things oh, could yeah, fit into sure. it, but then they also have a more specific um, category that they belong to, so they don't often get referred to as seinen, seinen even though they are. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, but go back to BL. I've noticed, like, girls are more targeted oh, yeah. for BL, and, yeah. like, g- girls GL or shoujo is more targeted towards guys. For sure. That's actually true. Oh, my gosh. Now that you put that out there. Like, with girls groups, guys usually follow those, and boys, like, for uh-huh. K-pop. Oh, Nikki. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's time for Nikki. K-pop? Did you say K-pop? <laughs> Nikki's coming in. <laughs> it's <her> turn. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's like, I think that's a product of the way that it's advertised and the way that it's marketed. So like Japan is like, oh, obviously only boys will want to read about two girls kissing. So let's market it to them. Let's put it in the boys magazines. Yeah, it goes back to like homophobia and all that. Because like, I think like if you're homo, like I'm not saying you're homophobic, but it's probably more comfortable to you to see guys kissing versus two girls kissing if you're like from a very strict heterosexual like type of family or well, whatever. Well, actually, I think, like, shoujo I Or conservative, that's the um, word. I think a lot of shoujo I stuff are more... It could kind of go both ways. I think both male and female mm-hmm. do kind of read it. Um, and then, you know, the yaoi and stuff, or, like, the BLs are most definitely more female-targeted. I know someone mentioned mm-hmm. K-pop earlier. <laughs> um and that (laughs) yeah and typically like girl groups do have a larger you know male following compared to boy groups but girl groups are generally known to be more appealing to the general public so yeah female and yeah a lot of they have a lot of female and male fans Mm -hmm. i think a lot of times when you actually look at like a big group like twice um Uh yeah so if you guys know twice twice has yeah. Generally, like a fifty-fifty, I think split of female and male fans. Um, oh, wow. But yeah, boy groups are most definitely predominantly female, though. And yet, I think that boy groups have been more popular here in the states. I don't yeah. know about other countries, I but think so yeah, I think that I think boy K-pop yes. groups have like caught on because they're targeting the the demographic that was into like In Sync and Backstreet Boys. And oh, one I direction. Really yeah, I do think, though, it's still a very, like, I think girl groups do gen- generally have a greater appeal to the general population, where they all attract, like, 
casual listeners as well as you know yeah. both male and female listeners while board groups are predominantly you know female fans mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i guess we're gonna come to shoujo now to what's your favorite or no what got you into shoujo what what caused your addiction tell us we're in a group study <laughs> group study <laughs> do we need this is a oh, breakout room <laughs> sorry Therapy session, not study session. Yeah, oh my god, Zoom breakout rooms over this. <laughs> yeah. We're not on Zoom though. <laughs> but yeah. I think that it's a bit difficult to find where like my interest in shoujo started because my older brother and my younger sister, when we were um, younger, we were watching a lot of anime actually on um, 4 Kids TV and all that stuff and Cartoon Network, Toonami Jetstream. So like, I was into Dragon Ball Z when I was younger, I was also into Pokemon, and like, I, um, you know, I came across Yu-Gi-Oh! as well, and a bunch of other, like, typically shonen series, and then, like, I think Magical Dory and me may have been, like, if I had to really track it, maybe I think that was my first one. And I really loved it, I didn't know it was an anime, which was really funny, so, like, you know, like, when you hear it all in English, I'm sure like many of you have had this like realization where you're like, oh wait, this is this is like this is an American cartoon, right? And then you find out, wait, that's actually Japanese, like way later on. Or like Or if you're B, you think it's a Chinese cartoon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you, you just think it's like the <laughs> dumb language it's in. And then like literally, um it was kind of funny. I thought Doraemon was Indian for oh the my longest God. time. Since I listened to it in the <laughs> yeah. Hindi day. Oh. The doves are where it's like you think that's what where it's from, and then like I remember because Magical Doremi and the Four Kids TV. I don't know, if, like I know some so you've watched it, and I remember it left off on such like a sad ending that I was like, "Where's the second season though?" So like I immediately Google stuff, and then I found out it's called Ojamajo Doremi, and I'm like, "What? That's not Magical Doremi?" And then I realized, wait, this isn't in, even in English. And I found Roz on YouTube. I'm like. <laughs> And I was like trying to watch it too, actually, as a kid, and then eventually got subbed. But that was like so funny to me. So like, I felt like Magical Doremi was one of them, and like Powerpuff Girls Z even. That was I don't know how I found that, but I eventually found that. And then like, wait, is Powerpuff Girls? Yeah, Z it's an anime. anime. It was like an anime spinoff huh? of Powerpuff Girls. Wait, and Power- it was kind of interesting. Powerpuff Girls American. I watched, I watched that it in one. Korean, so I have no idea. It is interesting. Yeah. I had no clue. Yeah, Powerpuff Girls is American. Yeah. Powerpuff Girls and Teen Titans actually were done by Japanese studios, I think, but the writers were American. I believe. Dun, yeah. dun, dun. I remember like the the opening for Teen Titans. Right. They had their Puffy own show. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. I went to their yeah, concert yeah. once. Yeah. Hi, hi, Puffy Aki Oh my gosh, yes. They also had yeah. Teen Titans. Teen Titans was a little anime like. Teen Titans go. <laughs> <laughs> It was like, sorry. yeah, so like, it was basically Magical Doremi at first for like the longest time, and then I found the graphic novel section in the library and came across like Choco Mimi and then like Amazing Agent Luna. And those are like the American titles of, I think some of them were actually probably written in, like, I know definitely Choco Mimi was written in Japan and then got like licensed here by Viz Media. I think same with Amazing Agent Luna and like other shoujo titles, and then I later found like, other series because of friends recommendations like somebody recommended me fruits basket or on high school host club and then my little monster and then like you know i needed to read the manga to find out what happened next and i didn't know that was called manga at the time but then i was like okay i need to find like the comic version of this to find out what happens after the anime so then like i went through the library and bookstores and i eventually found like this is its own genre like shoujo manga it was super cool when i found that out because i've like loved it since then so yeah I love that, like, most of us had the start with Magical Girls. Yeah. I mean, Pokemon too, but, like, yeah. I love that Magical Girls is the origin for all of us. Shugo Chara was also one of the Yo, younger... I love Shugo Chara. <laughs> yeah. You know, oh my God. our original cat boy, Ikuto. But, I know, but thinking back, <laughs> that age gap, mm, <laughs> questionable. Yeah, a lot of the, yeah, a lot of those age gaps back then. Mm. Don't worry, guys. We're gonna have an age cap episode, if not a whole series. Bro. Just the age cap. <laughs> I have so much to say about, about age, age cap. cap. There is so much age cap to cover. All right, Samosa, let's let's hear your origin story. Okay, like everybody here, I watch Saturday morning cartoons. Um, 
but my parents couldn't afford like um having like a cable news or uh, not cable like just yeah. cable in general so i didn't have cartoon network or disney channel or any of that growing up i just had like pbs kids at most and like saturday morning cartoons until we moved to korea um but i lived in korea for 10 for like not consecutively but 10 years mm-hmm. total so i've watched a lot of anime there not realizing it was anime mm-hmm. um but i think like to go like shoujo it would be like um magical doremi was like a big like one of one of the first i've watched um on back to saturday morning cartoons a lot i've watched was like pokemon um Yu-Gi-Oh. i didn't like dragon ball z for some reason i just could never get the into fights it. are so long i get i don't that. know i just i just hated it i hated it so much i used to like just skip the channel watch like something else and wait f- like for the 30 minutes it would play and then come back <laughs> you really to watch it, it. <laughs> well. um yeah, I did. I, I, and I still what don't like it. you didn't realize was that it had actually gone to the next episode during that break, but it was still the same thing. Because yeah, oh my the god. Recap... 40 ep- like 20 episodes oh, of yeah. Frieza versus Goku or whatever. <laughs> I recently rewatched all of oh Dragon Ball. All of DBZ. Very brave uh-huh, of you. All? And all of wow. Dragon Ball Super as an adult. Um, and you know what? I don't hate myself. <laughs> I loved it, Okay. <laughs> I have a shirt right now. I'm wearing a Dragon Ball shirt right now. Oh my gosh, you're a Dragon Ball fan. <laughs> I am. Aligned. You're one of those fans. I have <laughs> trunks on my shirt, and I tell you, this is my most popular shirt. Every time I go out wearing it, somebody tells me, I love your shirt. So It's crazy. <laughs> it's not me. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to give you a compliment. I'll turn around. I'm not like, going to ask you, Samosa. <laughs> God. Samosa, I was out here roasting us. <laughs> Like I said, I'm not a nice... Oh, I didn't say it, but I'm not a nice person. Okay. <laughs> She's not. That's okay. That's valid. That's okay. We love that. We still love you. We accept you. Thank you. I love this therapy session. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell us more about how you hate Dragon Ball. You don't have to sound so venomous. <laughs> Jeez. I don't like being attacked. And I will take it very personally. You're like ready to attack people, but you yourself <laughs> are ready to accept the blows back to you. Okay. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, so when I lived in Korea, I didn't like I didn't like wa- actively like watch mm-hmm. anime because it was in Korean and I don't speak yeah. Korean, <laughs> which is very embarrassing. Um, so I would just watch Disney or CNN, CNN. <laughs> or literally just CNN. And it's like, I was very annoyed. Oh my god, you watch CNN as a child? Watch... <laughs> yeah, exactly. I understand everything I about you now. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's my, what my parents had on. I was like, I'm not going to fight for the channel if I don't want to watch it. That's the thing else. about being an only child, I think. Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, like, I everybody has, like, that embarrassing email address, right? I just took, did what my parents did, which was have their first and last name as wow. their email. Wow, you never even went through That's that phase. So, so, I yeah, I never went through that phase because it was like, okay, I'll just copy what my parents are doing. This seems... So, I've never had to change my email address, which I'm proud of. I've, it's, I never had to change it. <laughs> Actually, no, I lied. I did have to change it from Hotmail to Gmail because one time I changed my age on Hotmail to, like, my actual age. And I think I was, like, oh my 11. God. <laughs> so, I got locked out. <laughs> I got locked out of Hotmail and I couldn't get back in until I turned, like, 15. Oh, my God. That's they actually waited funny. Long. All my emails were deleted. I was oh no, devastated. All those K-mail. And yeah. and all my contacts with my friends. Mm. Since like I moved, I didn't move around a lot, but a lot of my friends did. Since I grew up in like a American military background, so obviously those people always move around a lot. Um, but because my dad was a civilian, we didn't have to yeah. move around. But going back to shojo, um, I didn't. I watched Magical Dory Me, um, and I didn't. I watched Seer Bearded Away mm. too, but I don't think that counts as a shoujo, right? So. No, it's just anime. Um, I was I I picked it up at the library when I was younger, and I watched it, and then it was it was it was a good anime, but I didn't like. I thought I liked cartoons. I didn't like anime specifically. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. So, I liked. Sh- like kitty sh- not kitty like, shows I mean, here, do you here. mean like teen <laughs> titan that sort of stuff yeah like yeah. cartoons in general i didn't but i haven't watched all of teen titans since i didn't have cable yeah. and i was on illegal websites and when I, mean, I didn't yeah 
Like, I didn't watch Avatar The Last Airbender until, like, 8th, ninth wow. grade. I just recently watched it. It's so on Netflix good. now. All of it? Or, you're like, you didn't you never watched it I never watched, watched it, before? it before, and I was so happy that I finally got to watch it recently. Best time. I it's rewatched really it recently, too. It's so good. Yep. That was, I... like, it came out my... Since it was so hard to yeah. find, like, outside, I... But I figured out on Nick.com, if you, like, put in, like, Avatar, like, a specific thing, you'd get the oh episode of. <laughs> Hacker, Hacker and that's how I watched it when okay. I was in 8th grade. And then I had to skip some episodes because it wasn't on, app, like, the Nick app, the Nick yeah. website. Um, but specifically, like, actively watching anime or manga, or reading manga, it wasn't until, like, ninth grade. Like, I, I found Avatar in 8th grade, and then I decided to, like, jump. Like, I was like, oh, this is good. I want to see more. Since everybody thought Avatar was anime. Yeah, right? everybody thought that. <laughs> For some reason. It, like, it was on the anime side, so that's how I found anime specifically. Mm-hmm. Um, So I think, I remember when Funimation was separate from Hulu. Yeah. Are they not separate? <laughs> yeah, that's when I first... Yeah, they were separate. That's when I first started watching anime. So, like, I think the first ones I, like, actively watched as anime were, like, stuff my friends were, like, drawing fan art of. So I had a friend who, like, drew Sergeant Frog fan art. Yeah, I thought that was Chinese, too. <laughs> and I've never seen Sergeant Frog. You know, Sergeant Frog is the most, like, it's everywhere. I didn't know what, I had, like, seen Sergeant Frog before. Sergeant and Frog? I've seen Death Note before, before realizing what they were. Like I saw a Death Note live action before Wait, realizing the, the terrible Netflix Death one. Was... No, the Japanese oh, okay. one that came okay. out like a while ago, like in when I was probably in elementary school. I saw it on like some Korean channel, and I was like, "Oh, what's this? Who is this monster thing? Wow. <laughs> Why is he <laughs> holding an apple?" <laughs> um, but yeah, I think like the first shoujo anime I watched was Kami Sama Kiss. Yeah. Oh, so I haven't ever watched the anime. I only read the manga. I haven't even watched it and read it. I watched it when it was still ongoing. Like that's when I first watched yeah. it, and I was like, "Oh, it comes every week. That's interesting. I'm gonna continue." And then I found out one of my friends was also like into shoujo itself, so she recommended me a couple of them. She recommended me Hyoka, uh... Horimiya um Tom, like she recommended everything on kyoto animation basically she told me free she watched free for the <laughs> that's a lie uh-huh. that's, that's a lie, lie. we all know that that's a lie. <laughs> that's exactly she watched plot. free for the what oh the, the plot. plot the plot, the plot. <laughs> exactly one exactly. of my favorite things of free is this um animation someone did over the ending song where it, they're like really poorly drawn over but you can tell <laughs> they just went over the cells and like throughout the so the ending theme, their noses get progressively larger and pointier. So oh the, and then God. at the end, oh. like and there, should link that video there's sometime. like an outline of their penis is also clear in like oh. every frame. Ew. <laughs> and, like, that reminded me of something else. So it's like a uh, this like swimmer guy. He's like in swim trunks and like the what's the thing you put on your head as a swimmer? Swim the, cap. Swim cap. The swim cap? Yeah, swim yeah. cap. And then swim he cap. Like, doing the ending for free, like low budget style, and with like a really shitty like green screen. <laughs> oh my god. That's and so it'd be good. him trying to I act out all the characters in the ending card. It was great. <laughs> you know, I loved free when it came out. Oh my gosh. I was obsessed with it. That was, that's so funny. I only went through three episodes. I couldn't do it. I was like, this is, like, I was, I think when I started for, first started, like, actively watching anime, I was like, I'm going to watch it for the plot, yeah. nothing else. Since I thought of myself as a oh. really <laughs> False. <laughs> no, I'm serious. When I was in elementary school, I read, all I did was read classic books because I was wow, that wow. You were like, that's my personality <laughs> trait. I read classic books and watch CNN. Yeah. Yep. Right? You were that kid. Literally. So, also, you were like the... Yeah, I was literally Did you, that... like, push your glasses up your nose as you... Yeah, you um, were that and glasses at anime pro tag. Well, well, I was one of the, like, quote-unquote smart kids. And I, like, actively studied and I did all that. And then I think I got burnt out. And that's when I started watching anime and manga, reading yeah. manga. Like, was when I had my burnout. <laughs> what I think is interesting from, like, all of our stories is that, you know, a lot of us had watched... Um, shown in anime when we were yeah. younger, like Dragon Ball, or, like Pokemon, and things like that. Um, but I feel like a lot of like guys that if you ever talk to them about like their younger years, they wouldn't have said that they watched Sailor Moon 
or oh um, my boyfriend did he grew up on sailor moon and my little oh uh, well a lot wow. of the guys a lot of the guys i talked to though they i did i've never watched dragon ball z um and i remember someone was like you didn't watch dragon ball z like what and i'm like no <laughs> but um i watched sailor moon like did you watch sailor moon did you watch gaku and alice um mm. you know i was like did you watch Shikotara? Like, I was saying all those things, you know, and he was like, no. And I'm like, exactly. Um, <laughs> There's that yeah. whole, like, thing about the dominance of shonen over shoujo that's, like, yeah. so toxic within the anime community and in general. When you meet people, you're like, oh, I watched this as a child, or I was really into this shoujo as a child, and then it's always DBZ or Naruto that are first brought up. Yeah, or even, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! and stuff like that, too. Yeah. Um, they were most definitely a lot more available. I've never saw Naruto aired. Right, because I think that they felt that anime was for children. Back in the, you know, 90s and early 2000s, is like, places like Poor Kids, and mm, the, the, the TV programs that were bringing anime over, to the yeah. states and then you know other countries i don't know about other countries i don't want to speak for them but at least for america um the people Definitely. doing the dubs were like this stuff is for children and so that's why you have four kids like censoring a lot of content in Yu-Gi-Oh is most famously in one piece um yep. and that's why i think you get a lot of those more shonen oriented shows rather than shoujo because their demographic was not they didn't think that girls like 12 13 14 would be watching this stuff they were like no this stuff is obviously for little kids so we're gonna put out the stuff that we think will will be most popular with little kids oh, and shown in yeah. like canada we are like physically like bc we had like uh naruto bleach and like all the quote-unquote more mature anime air after like 9 p.m or something adult swim yeah. adult oh, yeah. swim oh i guess yeah, yeah but it's, it was on a kid's channel still <laughs> so you need... yeah i think that was cartoon network too yeah yeah yeah. In Inuyasha was like also another one. Yeah, too. Inuyasha, which is really oh, yeah. not like adult. It's a very censored, like PG anime generally. <laughs> so I'm not sure why they were like, let's put this on Adult Swim, even though it was perfectly fine and less violent than a lot of American cartoons, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Yu Gi Oh! was pretty violent. <laughs> yeah. Well, they changed a lot in Yu Gi Oh! Initially, in Yu Gi Oh! like, if going to the shadow realm meant that you died or not going to the shadow it's just like when you lost you died so they changed that to be like going to the shadow realm whatever that means um that's crazy because i didn't know that they didn't air right. like season zero or whatever where like yeah you know, yeah it's very explicit yeah, they that people that. died exactly yeah oh wow they never censorship did I, I, th- I thought they just disappeared no, right even not. in pokemon <laughs> Even in Pokemon, some episodes were never aired, like a po- mm-hmm. an episode where James um, cross dresses. Yeah, and that's has, like big breasts. Aired. Yeah, or like an episode where an old man pulls a gun on the kids was yep. never aired. That's or what ironic. Like, the classic seizure oh one was never aired, too, technically. I think the, tent- oh, the right. Tentacruel ironic. one never aired because 9 11, when the Tentacruel was like pulling down the towers. It yeah, was, like... and that, that like bit was in oh, the opening oh. of the of the theme song and i would always wait for that part i was like when are we gonna see that episode like what is that giant pokemon i like? know they never and then they it never show it i was so shocked when i heard about that i was just like wow i didn't know that was a that was, they really censored a lot of things yeah didn't they like turn like um what's it the, the rice. yeah rice to do- jelly yeah. donuts <laughs> yes jelly <laughs> yeah. donuts. or crackers i'm trying onigiri, to think of the japanese right? name for it onigiri <laughs> Onigiri. No, no. Onigiri, yeah, yeah, yeah. I only know the Korean name, which is like Samga Kimbab, which means like triangular kimbab. <laughs> um, yeah, we could, we should definitely talk about four kids and their censoring. Yeah, that should be, some a, be interesting. We got a lot of episodes um, planned for you guys. Definitely tropes. That's probably going to be a whole. Yep season there um we're gonna get into some more serious stuff like sexism and social structures in shoujo um lgbtq plus representation people with disabilities being represented in shoujo and then some more um casual lighthearted things um like i said like tropes um and then probably bleed into other some genre other genres as well like jose and shonen as we've been talking about so it's gonna be a fun ride 
I hope yeah. you'll be willing to join us. Please, please join us. Please we want to hear for you guys. Here. I feel like you're like President Trump, like suburban women. Please like me. <laughs> oh my god, you. <laughs> we got majority of the votes, so we obviously have to. You have to listen to us because we got yeah, majority yes. of the votes. Ever for a sitting president. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be exciting. I look forward to talking about um, JoJo, but then also like webtoons we talked a little bit about, and hopefully we'll talk more about. So that would be really cool, and other things like that. I'm excited for that. Yeah, as far as releases, um, we're looking into potentially bi-weekly or once a month. We will try and decide on that really soon, um, but expect a good chunk of episodes to be coming out, um, like an anime season, maybe 12 in a row. And each of those is going to have a different combination of our members on there so that we don't get overwhelmed with having six voices every time. Um, anything else you guys want to add? I think we were also hoping to like consider watching some series as they were releasing, so... Oh yeah, doing some watch cool. I think Fruits... Yeah, watch together is... Koromiya will be starting. We're yeah. excited to watch that with everybody and talk yeah. about it. Yes. Yeah, I'm just excited to see where this goes and excited to talk more about, you know, the tropes that we love, the tropes that we hate. We're all yeah, here from shoujo. We're all we all shoujo manga hoes, as that was going to be our name at one point. <laughs> so, SMH. SMH. And if you enjoy anything that. romance related, basically, romance manga related, we'll probably mm -hmm. have a discussion on anything that's related yep. to that. So, look forward to that. All right. Thanks for listening, guys. Hope to see you next time. <laughs>